Today we are going to discuss, I mean, I'm going to answer to one somehow somewhat controversial question. That is, do tarantula require a water dish in their enclosure? And should you provide tarantulas with a water dish? In my humble opinion, I don't think that tarantulas require a water dish in order to have a happy life. But I would always recommend to have a water dish inside of the enclosure because it is safer for tarantula and at the same time it makes a care easier and more simple. So I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, thumbs it up and comment some. No, 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 no. Let's dive a bit deeper. Okay, the thing that motivated me to do this video was in fact the death of my Brachypelma Emilia and I showed that in the last video. And the reason why I wanted to do this video because every time a tarantula dies in the dark den, there is always a lot of people saying that it is because I don't provide them with water dishes. As you know, in majority of my enclosures, I don't have water dishes. So that is often questioned why I don't provide them with water dishes. While in the same time, if you check out my uh, how to tarantula video where I cover the entire basics of tarantula care. In that video I strongly recommend to provide a water dish to a tarantula. So you might be wondering why the hell am I not doing that if I'm recommending that. Well yeah, I'm going to talk about that and also I will share you the opinion of some other tarantula keepers. But first let me show you something exciting. This thing, this beast of the enclosure. You see, I finally finally added the substrate and not only did I edit the substrate but I also if we can spot someone and no we cannot but also I added the isopods inside and also springtails so there are first animals inside of this enclosure this junglearium and funny thing a few days ago I had um, I had a visitor here that is a subscriber and he told me that dark den seems much bigger on the video than in real life. That is because of the wide angle lens. But in the same time, he told me that Jungalarium seemed much, much smaller on the video. And he was shocked how huge the enclosure is. So in case this doesn't look too big, it is huge. I mean, two and a half meters and height is almost two meters. So insane dimensions. And now, even though it is not planted, you know, these are plants, you see, they are just standing there in pots. Uh, even though it is not planted, it now finally starts to look like a proper enclosure. Uh, a proper jungle. A beautiful enclosure. Mm, I'm so happy that it is finally, that it is finally happening. And even though I added the isopods inside, I'm struggling with some things, but I won't spoil it now. I will keep it for a video. So now, uh, let's talk about water dishes or to actually answer the question why I don't have water dishes in majority of my enclosures and the main reason for that is this. I like uh, naturalistic setups with real plants and somewhat nice background, some leaf litter. And when you have enclosures like that, sticking a big water dish inside, oh look this poke is actually out, it's Alteria Sufusca, mm -mm -mm. but Sticking a big, oh, even this one, <laughs> but sticking a big, big water dish inside, it is just not visually appealing to me. So that is my primary reason why I don't use water dishes inside of my enclosure. And before you freak out, before you think, oh my God, Petco, you just don't like how they look and you are not providing them to your tarantulas, uh, it is not like that. I actually, when I started in the hobby, I was of course providing them with water dishes. But you know what then happened? Great majority of tarantulas would try to bury the water dish constantly. Heavy webbers would just web over it. And I noticed that despite my effort of providing tarantulas a clean water source, every time that water source would just get dirt over it or web over it, effectively just becoming a moist dirt or moist web. So I was like, okay, I can just spray the enclosures and they will be moist. One, I can keep one corner moist and I can rotate those corners so mold doesn't develop. And at first I removed the water dishes from those tarantulas that were burying it constantly. But then as I noticed that they are fine without the water dish, I slowly started removing a water dish from other tarantulas because I was persistent with my spraying, with my misting the, the enclosures and for some I would even have live plants inside which on its own makes the enclosure more moist. 
So that was my logic behind. And I noticed that things are working like that. There is not a problem. And even now, there is no problem in the dark den. I have, keep in mind that I have around 150 tarantulas. So of course, on occasion, tarantula will die. Dehydration is not the only cause of death in tarantulas. And constipation, from what I know, it was never really linked with uh, tarantulas not having a water dish. I know people that keep their tarantulas with water dishes and they still had uh, cases of constipation. So that theory just doesn't hold the water. <laughs> but all jokes aside, let me show you some raw data. You see this notebook? Inside of this, uh, I used to write every tarantula that I bought or that I got. I used to write when I got it and also some information about it, how much I paid for it, when it molted and such. That was back in the time when I, when I had a lot more free time to track this stuff. But anyhow, this right here, uh, Gramostoa rosea number one. This was Sasha, my very first tarantula. And as you know, he reached maturity as a male and unfortunately he attempted to do a post molt. That is when a mature male tries to molt for the second time after his ultimate molt and that results, most of the time it results with death or sometimes when a male manages to molt like that, he will lose pedipalps. But unfortunately, Sasha didn't manage to do that and he got stuck during the molt. So it was a natural death. Then we have my second tarantula. She unfortunately died last year. I bought her in 2014 as a 10 centimeters female and she died last year in 2022. So that means she was most likely like two or three years old or most likely two years because they grow pretty fast. So she lived for like 10 years, but I think that they should live for more, I'm not certain. Next one, it is a uh, Pezzotera regalis. Uh, this one matured in my care and I gave it off for a breeding, but I think that he got killed. It was a long time ago. Heteroscodera maculata, I still have this female, without a water dish, of course. Gramostola pulchripes, I sold this one. I even have it written here to who I sold and for how much. <laughs> Brachypelma opilosum, this is Annie. She's still right there. I bought her in 2015 and she was already uh, an adult female. So in my humble approximation, she was at least five, maybe even 10 years old. It is hard to tell because she already looked like a fully grown female, but in the meantime, she molted a couple of times and she is still there. Not only that, but since this is an original enclosure, I think that somewhere here, yeah, you can actually see <laughs> a water bottle cap that I, Used to use it as a water dish, but it just got buried inside. So usually I'm just watering this area. And she's still fine. I even had uh, two successful eggs, eggs from her and all of that without a water dish. So she should definitely be a dead tarantula by now if the water dish is a problem. Next one is Gramostoa pulhra. And this was also a mature male that molted in my care. I mean that matured in my care and then I gave it off for, I traded it for some other tarantulas. Pterinohalus murinus, she actually died recently, like two or three months ago. I, I'm not sure if I mentioned it on the video, but also that was the female that got a constant problem with her legs. You know, she was dragging her leg all the time and even it was persistent after each mold. So she was problematic. And regardless of that, I got her in 2015 and she died in 2023, which means that she lived for eight years. Not a full lifespan, I think, but still a decent amount. Next one is Tapinohenius violaceus. I still have this girl and she actually made two phantom XX, eggs, which means that she made an XX egg without being paired and the eggs are of course not fertilized. I bought three of these. You see, this is the second one and this is the third one, but I sold them. Another Heteroscodera maculata, I sold her. Then another Heteroscodera maculata, I also sold her. Anandu chromatus, I bought these slings. They weren't even a proper tarantula. They were like staged before they mold into a proper tarantula. I bought four of them and you can see here, one didn't mold and died quickly. I still have this one and the other two I sold them off. Brachypelma smithy, now this is a Brachypelma hamori and I still have this one. Unfortunately male, but still not mature. So I still have it over there. Heterotella villocella, I sold this one. Acanthoscuria geniculata, unfortunately she died also last year, I think. So that is three unknown cases of death out of my first 
25 tarantulas. I don't think that that's a bad percentage, right? Should we continue? This is a Chromatopelma tiana pubescens, a male that matured in my care and I sold it off. Telnobius muticus, I sold it off. Petzalteria ornata, she's still here. A huge female, you know. Avicularia versicolor, now it is uh, Caribena versicolor. And yeah, I still have, this is a, uh, she is Nemo's mother and I got her as a tiny sling. And you know that these slings are notorious for dying uh, in beginner's care, but you see I managed to raise it up and she's still alive. I think that that's enough. How many, how many tarantulas did I, 66 tarantula was the last one that I wrote inside and that was in 2017. Ah, good times. I kind of miss those days when everything was new and super exciting. But you see, looking at the data in this book, if tarantulas require a water dish in their care, all of those tarantulas would die a long time ago, but they didn't. And the thing that I hate the most, what people are saying to me, I don't provide my tarantulas with water dishes because I'm lazy to fill them up. While the reality is completely opposite. If you see me starting to use a water dishes inside of my enclosures, it means that I'm cutting down on maintenance because having a water dish inside of tarantulas enclosures makes your maintenance far easier because you just keep that water dish filled and you know the tarantula will never dehydrate it. It will never dehydrate. If you don't have a water dish inside of your enclosure, then every time you are misting the enclosure, you need to gauge if there is enough humidity inside or not. You can easily overdo the misting and then have mold issue. You can easily forget to mist and then your tarantula will dry out and die. A lot of things can go wrong when you don't have a water dish and it actually takes more effort and time to maintain enclosures that don't have water dishes. So it is so annoying when I see those comments. Please stop with that. I don't mind when someone tells me just have a water dish inside, it is better because it is better or that I should stop being stubborn about that and just use the water dishes. I don't mind that, but when you tell me that I'm lazy and that I don't do that because I'm lazy, then I have a problem with that. And the exact reason why it is recommended for a beginner to have a water dish inside of his enclosure, it is because there is smaller chance for his tarantula to die. It's simple as that. I reached out some other content creators, tarantula YouTubers, to hear what they think about the topic. So first one is the person that is far more knowledgeable and more experienced than me, the one and only Tom Moran. Hey all, Tom Moran here from Tom's Big Spiders. So we're talking a bit about water dishes. I'm a huge proponent of water dishes. However, when talking about this rather controversial topic, I do like to make two facts abundantly clear. Number one, can tarantulas survive in captivity without water dishes? Well, it's a fact that they can because there are keepers out there that choose not to give their animals water dishes. In these instances, they usually use a combination of misting and moist substrate to make sure that the tarantulas are hydrated, or some folks out there just allow them to get their hydration from their food. Now, is there a difference between surviving and thriving? Well, I would say there is. So that brings us to our second fact. Will tarantulas use water dishes? Yes, they absolutely will. This isn't my opinion, it's a fact. And if you don't believe me, let's take a look at a couple videos I have here of some of my species, including some that are considered to be arid species, drinking. Over the years, I've collected dozens of photos and videos of drinking tarantulas from keepers, so I'm definitely not alone. If they're getting enough water from their food, then why are they drinking? When considering these facts, I strongly believe that the question hobbyists should be asking themselves isn't do they need them, but if they use them, why wouldn't I give them one? This brings us to our theme of survival versus comfort. Sure, a tarantula may be able to survive without a consistent source of clean water, but is that really how we want to keep these animals? Do we merely want them surviving in our care, or do we want to provide them every amenity and comfort that we can? I've seen many examples of situations in which hobbyists have shown dead spiders in dry enclosures with no water dishes while proclaiming that they didn't have any idea how they died. During a recent discussion with a fellow hobbyist and exotics veterinarian, he spoke about having seen numerous spiders suffering from dehydration and molt issues. In most of these instances, the tarantulas were not provided with water dishes. His main advice to hobbyists, give them dishes and let the tarantulas decide if they need water or not. So in conclusion, I think that every animal in captivity deserves consistent access to clean water. That's just basic animal husbandry. And I don't see why it would be any different for tarantulas. Oh, Tom, I thought that you got my back on this one. No. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, I must agree with Tom, yeah. Especially when he words it like that. Every animal deserves a source of clean water. If only they weren't such an 
eyesore inside of the enclosure. But does that mean that you also provide your slings with a water dish, huh? Or they are not worthy of having a water dish? Hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I have also observed tarantulas drinking from the water dishes. I even have some old clips of back in the day when I used to have water dishes inside of the enclosures. But then again, tarantulas in smaller enclosures, you can't really provide them with a water dish. Thanks Tom for your input and everyone else watching this, uh, listen to Tom and do what he says because he's definitely more right than I am. <laughs> And I reached out to another content creator and the only reason why I reached out to her is because I need to have an equal representation of both sexes. I'm kidding. I reached out to her because we are good friends and I value her opinion. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only tarantula cat. What do I think of the use of water dishes for tarantulas? So I'll put water dishes in most of the enclosures, but about 80% of the time the dishes end up getting buried or knocked over within like five minutes of me putting water in it. So honestly, my tarantulas mainly drink from me misting them, which I do much more frequently than filling water dishes. I'll only fill water dishes maybe like once every week or two, really depending on the species, but water dishes just don't seem to last long in my enclosures. I'll show you a few water dishes really quick. So there is a water dish. As you can see, there's water in it and there's some springtails in it, which is great. But then we have plenty of enclosures with water dishes here at the bottom that just never are seen again. The water dishes become a part of the enclosure or they just immediately get filled with dirt because I didn't do that. Do I think that water dishes are necessary for tarantula care? I'm probably gonna get a little bit of hate for this, but no, because a lot of my tarantulas primarily just drink off of mist drops from the walls of the enclosure, from the ground. Yeah, like I said, I don't really use my water dishes much if they even last in the enclosure at all. Yes, tarantula kid got my back. <laughs> nice to see that she also suffers from the case of buried water dishes. Uh, guys, make sure to check out Tom Moran's channel and also Tarantula Skate's channel. Both of you, thank you for providing me with your opinions, making this video a bit better, much better. Yeah, better. Uh, rest of you, I hope that you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, thumbs it up and comment something. If you want to support this channel in more, there's a Patreon page. If you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe, especially if you want to see how this thing behind me will develop, because soon it will start to develop a lot. Also, next, not next Sunday, uh, not Sunday after this Sunday, there will be a live stream. So stay tuned for that. Bye. -bye.